Hey, welcome again to our briefing for the middle of the week, if you want to call it that, as we talk about the church, what we're doing, what's going on, and what, what's happening here. First of all, let me report about Easter. It was ex it, obviously incredible. Those of you who watched, we had a, close to 1,100 folks or devices that were reached. Uh, we figured there was around three or 400 people who just watched the whole program consistently all the way through. Some caught most of it, others. About, about a 1,000 views overall is what, what we can see from the analytics. But more importantly than that, there was just a... A lot of uh, people commenting and sharing the page, and that's what we ask you to do. And because of that, I mean, we reached uh, not just a lot of people locally, but in Spring, Magnolia area, in this part of our state, but even around the world, we had people responding from different parts of the world as they participated with, in the communion service with us. So it was a great, great day. You guys did a great job of getting that out to your friends and uh, sharing with, with those on, on your uh, connections and contacts about what was going on at the church. But God bless you. It was a great, great day. Looking forward to this Sunday. I'm really looking forward to when we just kind of lift this and start coming back and re-entering into to a time of corporate worship. You know, it's exciting to, to see people getting involved digitally, but nothing, I mean nothing replaces what it's like when we all come together as a church body and we're worshiping and singing and praying and studying the word together. Now that, 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 that presence of the Lord, that, that sweet smelling aroma as the scripture calls it, that comes out of corporate worship, it just can't be denied. It's it's just it's something I'm thoroughly missing. I'm, I told somebody I'm I'm having withdrawals from, and uh, maybe you are as well. So uh, I've I've learned to appreciate in a very real and new way uh, the joy of, of being together in fellowship and being able to to be with you and to enjoy what we're doing together. But uh, we want to be, continue to be cautious even as we re-enter. I'm having a meeting tomorrow night with our deacons. We're using Zoom and we'll be meeting and talking about a re-entry date and uh, how that will look for us, especially the first few weeks of coming back together. We're going to be practicing, obviously, the things we've done before. right before we were quarantined out of the building. We were practicing safe distancing and, you know, the, the lack of the hallelujah wave instead of the handshake. We'll be doing those things. We'll spread out the worship centers a, a little bit more so there's more space in between and continue to do that. But uh, obviously those who are, are, are vulnerable, uh, those people who, uh, who have, you know, a, a low immune system, uh, doesn't have the capacity for dealing with a lot of things, we we want you to, to be cautious and exercise discernment and wisdom in that. For those of you who consider yourself healthy, continue to be healthy. Continue to take care of yourself. I think another thing that's become obvious in all this is the importance of taking care of our bodies. These are the temple. You know, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God, Holy Spirit lives in here and he occupies this space as well. And this temple should be committed to the Lord. So I ought to be taking care of it, you know, and, and what I put in it. Uh, listen, if you, if you don't take, take obvious care, like just some basic getting up, moving around, being an active person, you need to start doing that. Take a multivitamin, if nothing else. I, vitamin A, D, and C, the three vitamins that are listed in, in helping our immune system. Get out, enjoy the sunshine. That's your vitamin D right there. The opportunity you had not to be at work, but to be at home, don't just sit inside the house and become a couch potato. Be careful and cautious of what you're putting in your body. I mean, I, I had here a little earlier, let me reach around, excuse me for leaving the camera a second. Uh, uh, these are the powdered donuts, you know. This could be a, a, a big downfall. Uh, you can't take something like this in a 32 ounce big gulp and say, okay, this is gonna be my breakfast today or, or my lunch today because I don't have time and I'm gonna eat this bag of powdered donuts. But I'm gonna pray, I always pray over my food. Your heavenly Father, bless this food and the nourishment of my body. That ain't going to happen, no matter how often and how long you pray it. That's not going to nourish your body. So let's take good care of ourselves. When we come back to the church, uh, let's come back whole, complete, healthy, not just physically, but let's consider our spiritual life as well. Let's have prepared hearts. You know, I, I see a lot of people posting uh, passages of Scripture and promises of God's deliverance and God's healing. Like Second Chronicles seven fourteen, God says, I will heal your land. Remember, there's some premise to those promises just as there's a premise to what you eat and we're asking God to nourish our bodies with it, we use common sense. But the common sense of 2 Chronicles seven fourteen is that we repent. And man, America's drifted from God. We've, we've stepped a long way away from God. But we're, we're trying to run to God and just have him do something for us, but we're not wanting to respond as well. You need to make sure your heart's right. Uh, we want to get physically right. We want to be spiritually right. That requires, here's a word a lot of folks don't like, discipline. But if you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, it does require discipline. Stay in the word. Keep praying for folks. Keep reaching out to people. Keep calling, texting, 
communicating in any way on any level you can with those that you care about and those that you love because uh, ministry continues to go on. We're going to continue to do that as well. We'll be back together soon. As I meet with the elders, we'll be discussing again what is that going to look for, for us and what's it going to look like. But also let me caution you not to buy into the hysteria of the media. Every day I'm hearing different news stories and, and they're presented, uh, this factual story, but it's presented in a way which is so skewed. It's kind of like my news department has to be their news department, so I have to have something worse and bigger and better than what they reported. It's like Fox and others who reported this last few days that, you know, America now has more cases than Italy and Spain and France combined. Well, please understand, America has three times the population. I think Italy and Spain and France have a combined population maybe of 170 million. America has 350 to 375 million people in it. So let's get realistic. There have been deaths. There's around 24,000 people that have died to this date in America. That's heartbreaking. That's, that's sad. But remember, majority of those have been people who have compromised immune systems, even young people who've had compromised immune systems. So, you know, don't buy into all the hysteria and I can beat your news story with another more fascinating news story. Let's remember when we, we come back together as a church, we, we do want to respect each other, but you need to take care of yourself and you need to be taking care of yourself, not only physically, but spiritually. But don't buy into all the, all the things that are going on line. All right, let's get back to, to serving the Lord together as a church body, worshiping the Lord. And we'll be announcing some dates in the, in, the, in the weeks ahead of us when we're going to do that. But keep to your disciplines, all right? And, and it, one discipline is going to be easy to let go is this discipline of coming back to church and celebrating. The Bible says in Hebrews, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Don't let Satan interfere there. Don't say, well, I can be online. I've gotten in the habit of watching online. Listen, online's good if you can't come to church for some physical reason, but it never should substitute your commitment to Jesus Christ and to the body of Christ, which is the bride of Christ, for you to be a real active part with other believers, sharing the experience, sharing your gifts, and being used by God. So let, let's start planning. Let's start praying. And when it happens, let's be there. Let's all be there, and let's have a celebration reunion service. I'm excited for the day when it comes. I'm not going to live in fear. Amen. The Jesus talked about the end times, and I'd be filled with times of famines and plagues and pestilence. He said, and all these things shall come to pass. But then he gave a very clear word to the church, to those who love Jesus. He says, do not fear. Don't be afraid. All this is going to happen. Things are going to get worse even in the future. It's just the signs of the times. We want to be ready. And we want to be looking for the Lord and be serving the Lord and worshiping together when the Lord returns. We, we don't want to be running from the truth because we're afraid of what's ahead of us. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're a child of God. Let's look forward to what God has for us in the days ahead. We truly are here for such a time as this. And let's don't buy into the hysteria. I mean, if you want to get things in real perspective, Around the world, you know, uh, it, from, from April 1st, let's just take from January to April 1st, you know, that you, realize, you need to realize that over 10 million, almost 11 million deaths have taken place because of abortion, infanticide, killing children. There's been another 3 million, close to 3 million deaths from starvation from January 1st to April 1st. There's been 2 million deaths from cancer, 1.25 million deaths from smoking, uh, close to half a million deaths from AIDS and HIV. 338,000 plus deaths from traffic accidents, 270,000 deaths from suicide, around 246,000 deaths from, from malaria, another 211,000 deaths from unclean drinking water in the world, another 122,000 deaths in the world from seasonal flu. So in America right now, I think it's 70 something thousand in the world, or I'm not sure exact number to date, but when I talk about that January 1st to April 1st dates, there have been about 47,000 people in the world had died from coronavirus. So let's get this in perspective, all right? And let's not let fear regulate our lives. Let's, let's be what God's called us to be, the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Be looking for the things that will be happening this week. Wednesday we'll put out a devotional word. Uh, we'll give you some more updates to what the church is doing in the days ahead. But make your plans to, again, get ready for church Sunday morning. Join us for the live stream. We're going to be sharing some things in the direction the Lord's given us in that service. So you do not want to miss it. Your pastors love you. I praise God for you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon. Can't wait till we get back together. God bless you.